Welcome to Operator Syndrome. I'm Patrick here with Steve as always. And uh, I can't help myself. I'm going to talk about Ranger School today. I can't so, wait. Well, we're, we're finally, you're, we're finally get to compare it against buds and then make the call once and for all, which one's harder. <laughs> um, so I, where to start? I, I guess when we were last talking about um, my story, I'd, I'd passed RIP, which is now known as RASP. Uh, I'd gone on deployment about three weeks later, went to Iraq, um, hung out, did some good training, saw, saw the guys doing some good stuff, got to go on one mission before we <laughs> left. And so came back, and then I think I last described what, that, what the training cycle was, the workup for, for the Rangers. So for my story, um, uh, I was, I did that, I basically did that entire training cycle after my first deployment, getting ready for my next one. The, my platoon was going to go to Afghanistan for the next one. And um, I guess I'm going to have to talk about how you get selected to go to school. So um, it's, and by the way, this is to that disclaimer. This is 2006. There was a war going on too, really. Um, it was different times. So take all this with a grain of salt. Um, but at, at that time, you know, the expectation was that you, you got at least because deployments were, were plenty, you got one deployment under your belt. And then, um, and then you'd be, at that point, you would be uh, eligible to go to school. This is not written anywhere. It's just sort of how things I went sort of an unwritten rule yeah. it seems to me that the, the way the rangers approach it i might be off on that it, it's a really different kind of approach than where i was coming from where you you basically you hit some wickets early on mm -hmm. you know infantry airborne rip rasp and then you actually get your ticket to the big boy club and then they kind of go hmm is this is this somebody we want to keep around or is this right. not somebody we want to keep around and then then it gets even more serious after that exactly so so you know you you're there they decide okay we do want to keep this person around and then there is a sen seniority does come into play so um after you new guys are called new guys call them privates um at the time there was this concept maybe it's still around maybe it's not this concept of a senior private that's not a rank for the for anybody with no military experience. There's no such thing as a senior private, but it, it was a concept of okay, you're a person who hadn't gone to ranger school yet, but you did have some salt on you. Like yeah, you, you did have a deployment, you did do a training cycle. You're not running around scared, and and, right. and you know, um, like you you can't, you you've started you start to know your stuff. You start to take the new guys who come in, and they're always new guys under your wing and you're teaching them a little bit. You're showing the leadership characteristics that we want to see to send someone to school because ultimately that's the idea. You're going to school because you want to be a leader, a leader in the Ranger Regiment. Um, the Army is all about that. Uh, being an NCO, going up, taking on those responsibilities. Um, individual operator, you know, if you'll call it sort of individual skills, that's that's just like table stakes. You have to get there. You have to get good. Um, if you're good at a particular thing, that doesn't really holding a leadership role, being an NCO is what you're striving for. It's not just individual um, performance. And I know some other special operations units are a little bit different. They hold in high regard the guy who can, the guy who can be really good at, at a certain thing. And, and if he just wants to be good at that, he doesn't necessarily want to be like, you know, a leading, a leading petty officer or a chief, right. like that's fine. That's okay. Be good at that. And I think, you know, there's some other units that are kind of the same way. Yeah. So, um, but in the Ranger Regiment, you got to want to be a leader. That's what you're working towards. So, you know, in my case, I, it was summer of 2006. I did that deployment. I got that one mission. So I came back technically. Okay. I was a senior private at that point. Right. So yeah, we get yeah. new guys and the heat's off of me and I'm feeling a bit, a little bit more comfortable. I'm relaxed with each training cycle evolution. I'm feeling more comfortable, all that kind of stuff. So at that time, there was kind of a weird phenomenon where, you know, before we had all the combat action going on, um, mm -hmm. school was everything. That yeah. was it. Cause you had nothing else to, to right. sort of weigh yourself against. But in 2006, by the time I had gone in, 
there was lots of combat experience. Right. And specifically in my platoon, we had senior privates with two, two combat rotations. Now, okay. this is, you know, again, four to six months. This is not like a 12 or 15 month deployment. Um, but but they had they would have two combat rotations. Like you could have a guy who's uh, an E4 who had already been twice. Um, and there was kind of this weird thing going on where where the value of Ranger School psychologically had diminished a little bit. Mm-hmm. On paper, it was still important. Everyone knew you had to go. It wasn't that. But the Ranger Regiment was letting guys stay in a little bit longer without going to school than they normally would have in the past. Um, and specifically in my squad, when I showed up, there were like four, four guys ahead of me who had multiple combat rotate two combat rotations who still hadn't gone to school and didn't That's seem far. very motivated to go. Um, why do you suppose that was just because, because it, it was like, okay, that's a school and I've done the real deal. I went to, I've been to Iraq. I've been in firefights, the you school know, of life, the school of life, right? It's, it's that whole thing. It's like, it's like, that, that's just a silly school doing Vietnam era tactics. Like right. when I go to Iraq, I'm, you know, I, I'm mini keg and I'm going and I'm clearing, and I'm doing all kinds of cool guy stuff. Yeah. Why. Um, it was, it was still the standard. So I, in my squad, I had like four guys ahead of me who, who hadn't gone to school yet, didn't seem very interested. So I, I did want to go because I still had, well, first off, that's what they told me I had to do. And so I, I was like, I was like, yes, sir. You know, you know, go do whatever the army tells you to. Um, and I'd had that one, I'd had that one deployment, the one mission, I did the training cycle and you want to go because once you get your tab, it's a different experience being in there. You're, you're kind of like a made guy, right? Um, you're, you, as like, made as you could be in the room. As made as one could, could be. Um, yeah. So I was like, you know, I'm tired of being a pride. I'll go whenever. So um, I'd show the aptitude. And I think it was a little bit to, to show the, those senior privates that, like, hey, this is an expectation of you. They let me go. They let me take the, the pre-ranger PT test. So I did. I passed. And then I went to school. So um, at that time, that was still kind of early. It was still kind of seen as, and because the seniority played a part in it, it was a little bit like, a, oh, man, like Nelson's a new, Nelson's basically a new guy and he's already going to school. So there was a, like a lot of that kind of stuff going on. Yeah. I wouldn't say animosity, but it definitely was like, it was kind of like for the rest of, for those other guys in my squad, the, a lot, some of them got out, some of them got kicked out and some of them finally got like the fire under them to go to school. So mm-hmm. a little bit was my squad leader sort of trying to light the fire under his mm-hmm. guys to like, okay, like carry on, continue to mature, continue to learn. Right. So, um, so that's sort of how you got selected back then in different battalions. It was different at third, third Ranger battalion, Fort Benning, Georgia, like, you know, anger battalion. Uh, no one wants to be there. Lots of folks get out. Like it's some people say it's relatively easy to get to go to school. Uh, I met guys who were at first battalion at, uh, at down in Savannah, Georgia. Like maybe there were at the time their retention was a little bit better, right? Better quality of life. Yeah. You live in, next, in Savannah. It's beautiful. Um, I heard guys say that it was almost impossible to get to school within your first enlistment you know, a first wow. three or four year term Boy, that because that they were, dumb. because they were so stacked and they kept people around. Right. And you already played such a big deal. That's what I heard. That's just what I heard. Mm-hmm. And uh, private rumor mill, you believe anything. So, so that's how, that's how you get selected. Um, you know, one part about the Ranger school experience is you have to go to pre Ranger first. Um, that's what they call it at the time. Of course, they've changed the name of it. I think they call yeah. it SUT small unit tactics now, <laughs> of um, course. but we just called it what it was pre-ranger. And, and this is really anybody who wants to go to ranger school army wide. Um, you pretty much have to go to a pre-ranger course, which is, so if ranger school is like two and a half months, it's 62, 63 days, something like that. If you don't recycle, you have to do a pre-ranger, which is like two, three weeks. So yeah. before you even get to go to ranger school, you have to do a mini ranger school. Right? Gotcha. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and so for those, those folks who are like really hung up on um, attrition rates and numbers, like that's something you have to factor in. So you have to factor in yeah, the yeah, guys yeah. who never made it into the school to begin with because they got right. to out. Yeah, for sure. Uh, at pre-ranger, I, 
you know, it was, again, I was keeping a low profile because again, sort of that Ranger regiment mentality, like you're a private, you keep like all these, a lot of the guys there were more senior than me. I had another guy from my, from my same RASP or excuse me, RIP class um, mm. who was there too. And he straight up said like, I'm not telling any of these guys that I'm a new guy. Like, I'm just going yeah. to be quiet. Oh, heck no, man. Hold the cards close. Yeah. The, the, yeah the but were you still an E3? Were you an E3? I was an E3. Yeah, I was a PFC, a private you know, first class. So for our civilian listeners, or may not, a couple of notes on jargon. When we say NCO, we're talking about non-commissioned officers. And that's what, does that start E6, E7? Uh, I think, yeah, I think E, well, tech, in the army, technically an E4, there's an E4 specialist, and then Wouldn't we that, have E4 corporal. So I was going to say, yeah. whatever happened to corporal? Uh, I'd later on go out to be a corporal, and, yeah. and but uh, the Marines use, the Marines only have E4 corporal, that's an NCO for them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the army, a specialist is not an NCO, an E4, so at the same pay grade, but a corporal, you are an NCO. Right. And it, that's a kind of a threshold when you get to E5 and above, mm -hmm. you've kind of crossed, a, a, crossed the Rubicon, you might say, because that's the first rank that's sergeant. And then yeah. you go staff sergeant and on up the chain. But mm -hmm. um, it, was, it, it was the same in the Navy, too. It's kind of a high watermark get, hitting E5, which is petty officer second class in the Navy. But um, it's uh, and I'll never forget. And this is we'll get back the, the, in, in the Oliver Stone film uh, Platoon. He talked about how the, sh the sergeants ran the war. I mean, they're they were the guys that got the job done. I mean, there's all this bureaucracy and rank. But the, um, anyway, back to Patch. He's he's still a private. So E3. Uh, the, uh, yeah. So still a private. And I'm a new guy in the Ranger Regiment. I'm 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 nothing as far as the army is concerned. So uh, pre-ranger, you, you basically, you go through all the tasks. You do have some field exercises. Um, you, get a, you get a little taste of what it's like to be tired and hungry, but nothing too crazy. In the Ranger Regiment especially, it was, if, if RIP or RASP was where like, you got your like, face kicked in, uh, pre-ranger or small unit tactics was, an was where, like, I mean, they would do that to you if you all were acting like hooligans. But, <laughs> but if you kept it together, the cadre was cool with you and they were really trying to teach you and the ranger regiments pre-ranger course was i think from a from a statistical perspective one of the most i think it was the at the time the most successful pre-ranger course army-wide and um i think each division has its own pre-ranger course many posts it depends on how they organize it and at what time but a post could have and a post is what army folks call a base we call it yeah. army post right so fort bragg the 82nd had its own pre-ranger course i'm pretty sure but like fort carson colorado maybe had a, a post pre-ranger course where folks mm. from the fourth infantry division would go to and and, and maybe some other units too so right so, uh so did that pre-ranger passed it um obviously and then showed up to ranger school um I'll give some like high level details about what Ranger School is. So Ranger School is broken up into three phases and I'll, and I'll give some more specific stories later, but just sort of in general, it's three phases. There's uh, the Darby phase there at Fort Benning. There's the mountain phase. I, I think it's called, yeah, it's the mountain phase up in Dahlonega, Georgia. The, North Dahlonega, Georgia. Georgia. Dahlonega, Georgia. I, I dated a girl from Dahlonega, Georgia. Nice. Uh, I never would have known that place existed. She said, there's some Rangers around here or something. Because I was I was in the teams at the time, but anyway, yeah. So Delonica, you're beautiful, beautiful yeah. part of the state. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then there's a, a swamp phase uh, down at uh, um, Eglin Air Force Base is where that phase was. In the past, there were there was a desert phase out in Utah or something like that, but that's old school. So if you went to desert phase, props <laughs> to you. Um, but at my time, yeah. it's three phases, and it still is. Um, let's see about Ranger School. So you show up, um, uh, you show up, you shave your head. It's one of those places. So this is, it's like, it's a pretty strict place. Um, you show up, there's no rank. So I'm, I'm PFC Nelson. Um, but like your, your classmate next to you, they could be a captain. They could yeah. be a lieutenant. They could be a major. They could be, you know, you know, whatever rank, but there are, there is no rank at Ranger school. And it's one of the few places in the army 
school wise where it's like that it's everyone's the same You're- when you say that did you still call him sir did you salute no okay no. okay no. so there's something there's a cultural uh thing we have in common it was the same in seal in buds you officers go through the same training as enlisted there's no difference in fact they probably get their asses handed to them more than we do because the instructors are like you're going to lead a seal platoon we're going to make darn sure your head screwed on straight but yeah very egalitarian in the sense of okay yeah so so no rank i i i think supposedly the instructors don't even know what you who mm. you are or what your rank is supposedly <laughs> I, I generally i think they figure it out they can mm-hmm. figure it out just sort of based yeah. on your demeanor because it there's and this is the next thing i'll talk about is like there there are these distinct groups subcultures in ranger school when you first show up so you've got so you show up there's no rank can't tell everyone apart but ever there are lots of people know each other right and these are big classes by the way so you'll start day one hundreds and hundreds of people show up to class up um, on that first day. And the, the type of folks you, you have, you have a few main groups. So first you have, of course, the best and the brightest, you have your bat boys. And that's what we call Ranger Regiment guys, guys from the Ranger Battalions, bat boys. So you've got your bat boys who all came together from pre-Ranger. Um, and then you've got the next sort of, another of the largest groups is your infantry officer, brand new infantry officers, fresh out of their basic course. Yeah, gotcha. So, and these these are made up of West Pointers and ROTC cats, and they're all mm. together, and they just spent however many weeks together, and they show up, right? And then and then from there, like the, the groups get smaller and smaller. But you've got like 82nd always has like a strong showing, mm. a, a good group of guys. Um, and then you have like the division, but then it like really peters out until you'll get like you might have like a an armor division and there are only two yeah. people or one guy yeah. from that division trying out for that class. Um, and then you've got some other interesting folks. So everyone tends to be young. I mean, everybody's young, right. Compared to us now, but sure. like, <laughs> but like, especially in their service, like most everyone is pretty brand, they're brand new LT or they're a private from the Ranger regiment or they're, you know, uh, a, a, a very junior NCO from one of the divisions from one of the conventional divisions, but then you'll get like, you'll get some, some captains mm-hmm. and you'll get some captains who maybe they had gone to the school before, or maybe they're in a different branch, excuse huh. me, not, not branch of service, service. Or there is that, but branch, like you would think ranger school would be all infantry, but that's not the case. You have field artillery, engineers, a pilot, um, maybe. Um, I don't remember any aviation people, but I think technically, yeah, you could do that. I think the army is like, a little sketched out by that they're like we want you to we spent a lot of money to teach you how to fly i don't want you getting right range school but any war any warrant officers in there i don't remember any warrant officers yeah that's kind of an class. interesting area yeah. yeah i think by that time you're just so you're just trying to skate so why would you yeah, go to yeah. ranger school but um so so and then and then yeah you have foreign you, like there is usually a pretty decent like contingent and when i say decent maybe it's like five guys from foreign militaries Uh, and then you'll have about the same size cats from the air force some navy guys marines they're always like a decent number of marines Mm -hmm. marines are awesome um and so that's that kind of makes up the class so no rank um the people from the people from other like u.s military services they'll wear their uniform so you can tell they're a marine you can tell they're an air force person whatnot um or an AV guy, but other than that, yeah, no ranks. And, and those are like the main groups, but it's, it creates like this interesting situation, yeah. especially in the first phases where um, you're really, you, you rely more. It's a little bit like survivor mm-hmm. that TV shows survivor because yeah. in ranger school peers are a huge thing, peer ratings. Um, so like you're very clickish. Everyone's very clickish to begin with because right. you want to make sure you survive that first part. And then that goes away and I'll have more stories about that later. But uh, I did want to talk about sort of like that weird, that yeah. sort of weird, because you know, people you're there with people, you know, they are people you don't know. They're like the others. And there's like a little bit of competition and rivalry at first until the tribal tired and hu- tribalism, right. Until you're tired and hungry enough and you've been yeah. working with your squad for long enough that you don't care anymore. But especially yeah. at the beginning, it's like very, it can feel very clickish at the beginning. Yeah. So um, you start up, the first thing you do is called wrap week. Um, we're, you know, 
um, surprise, surprise, R is ranger. I think it's ranger assessment phase or something like that. Um, and this is the first week of ranger school. First day is, of course, a PT test. Um, and that knocks out mm -hmm. a good amount of people. And then you have other fit. It's mo the ramp week is mostly like physical type events. Mm -hmm. um, so you've got um, a PT test. You got a 12 mile ruck in 40 minutes. I think your ruck's like 35 or 40 pounds, something like that. Um, and, 12 and miles, you said? 12. That's moving, man. Did I ruck. say 12 and 40? I don't remember. No, 12 and three. I'm sorry. Again, forgive me. Uh, it's been a long You're gonna time. You're going to say, holy smoke, man. <laughs> You're like, okay, yeah. yeah Ranger yeah. school is harder than but No, I'm sorry. <laughs> would have been. I, I think there's a five mile. Five. I think there's okay, a five yeah, mile yeah. and 40 minutes. Does that sound yeah, more? That. Okay. Yeah, I think there's no. a five mile and 40 minutes, but then there's also, but there's also a 12 mile. It's three hours. A 12 mile and yeah. three hours. Three hours. That sounds a bit more. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, just having fun. I'm here, to, I'm here to gas up the school, <laughs> make it seem harder. So, um, so you're doing a lot of stuff. So you do that. That rap week is where the most attrition happens um, because it's all physical based. Um, Ranger school is not really a place where people quit. I mean, they do. But I mean, there are so many events you're graded on that you can just fail out of. Like, at no, there's no bell in Ranger school, right? There's no there's no like, oh, I have a moment of weakness and I'm going to make this. I need to make this grand gesture to quit. Uh -huh. It's like. You've got so many things in that first yeah. week where you're being great. Like you just fail the thing and people do. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, um, and of course, at a, at a certain point, you do need to make the call and quit, but it's not like a big, it's not a big thing. Yeah, it's not like happens. a DOR. Exactly. Exactly. Um, uh, because the thing about Ranger School is they'll always let you recycle. They don't care. You can live here if you want. Yeah, we'll, we'll get your mail sent here. <laughs> like if you want to be miserable, and you want to stay here? That's the one interesting thing about, and it's sort of like the ranger school mentality. Yeah. is just like stay here, fine, recycle. Yeah, like it's pretty right, wild. Like, there are stories of people who spent like a calendar year. Yeah, again, is it rumors? I don't know, but theoretically, it could be possible. Spend a calendar year yeah. in ranger school in a training environment. Now you get block leave for the holiday. It's not like you're living out in the field that entire year. Right. But like for all intents and purposes, you're basically like. You're, you're basically a home station at ranger school. So, um, so yeah, rap week, there, there are a lot of different events. I barely remember any of them. It's, yeah. it's one of those things early on the, the sleep deprivation starts. Um, you're just, you're just shuffling from test to test to test. Um, you have, um, there's something called there are a couple, there's a couple of obstacle courses. Malvesti yeah. is like a famous one. So if you see pictures of, 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 folks in ranger school and they're crossing monkey bars and they're they're going underwater under barbed wire and climbing mm -hmm. over thing climbing over walls that's malvesti um that's you have to do that with a buddy you, so you do that in pairs and you help each other through there's a mm -hmm. buddy run maybe the buddy run is the five miler but the buddy run is in kit in kit boots in, in your sort in your in your acs bdus whatever you call them and, and a kit and a weapon a rubber duck like a fake weapon you mm -hmm. do that as a i think you do that as a pair too i'm pretty sure you do that as a pair too um so it's a lot of physical events there's also something called ranger stakes during that week which is where i believe it's during that week where you have to show some basic proficiency and some basic tasks like assembly and disassembly of a weapon like getting a radio up and getting a good like radio check mm -hmm. stuff like that uh, i think yeah. in placing like a, a claymore which is like this directional mine. Mm -hmm. um, it's, a, it's stuff like that. So the entire week you're just being tested. And I, oh, and combatives. There's a combatives ah. portion in that. So the combatives is interesting. If it is, in fact, in, during a rap. What, what model do they use? I'm kind of interested in that angle. So here's the deal with the combatives. Um, they, I guess they kind of teach you a few moves, but really it's like, it's really like an orchestrated dance of a bunch of people that don't want to get hurt in, in the first week. Of yeah. Yeah. So I don't, I, I couldn't tell you what the, what the, what type of fighting it was. Um, yeah. uh, but what I do know is all it is, is a hundred, a hundred dudes, 150, what have you, 200 dudes sitting in a, in a sawdust pit, like <sighs> pretending to put in maximum effort, like, dude, do not hurt me. I do not. Right. Want, I am not getting kicked out of here because you want to like hip throw me. Right. And, like show <laughs> no. up. 
for right? my so, career. So you're like, let's get through this, man. So it's just a bunch of people pretending to give it their all. Right. right? And um, now one thing they did do when I was there was they introduced tasers, tasers to the event. <laughs> That makes it interesting. So there would be like these these like rubber knives that were tasers on you. They take they give you a little they give you a, a decent a jolt, jolt, a little jolt. And so I don't know if they did that because they knew like everyone's sandbagging it, trying not to get hurt. Um, so it make it more interesting. But that's one thing we had, right? So you'd have these things, and that's like I think it's like a day or two days of that. Right. Um, yeah, you're not gonna be proficient at a martial art in two days but did they teach you like uh like the rear naked choke or uh, or did they bring chokes into it or was it more just maybe possibly yeah. again yeah. i don't remember it was such a small it was so much such a small thing and it was an event that was i don't think that was an event that you were graded on in any yeah. form or fashion i think that was very much an uh, a head nod and ode to earlier days of ranger training when yeah. it was when that was like a training component and that maybe that means it wasn't in rap week but um but i just remember it just being mostly mostly a joke just a thing that you had to survive and get through and not get hurt because yeah. people did get hurt and that's the that's the once you get through yeah. the the assessments and you pass then from then on until you graduate you're just trying not to get hurt exactly so so um you get through rap week and then you start your patrols um uh. So there, so, you know, the, th the way the three phases work are it's environmental, you know, in one aspect, mm -hmm. but it's also, again, complexity of right. operations. So the army loves to say crawl, walk, run for everything. We yeah. Do. I yeah. think that's like a military ism. Yeah. Everywhere. I've heard that one. Yeah. So, so at the, during the Darby phase there at Fort Benning, what you're doing is squad, squad sized operations. And what you're really focusing on is, um, ambushes and reconnaissance okay. um i don't think you do raids as a squad right so the squads are huge in ranger school especially at my time so you'd have a squad of like 15 people which is not like that's not like a real thing in the army in the army a squad is like nine nine yeah ish. well um, in the teams that's a platoon level <laughs> and a squad would be half that and a fire team would be half that so mm -hmm. so i've they they're beefy because um because of the attrition that happens along the way so rap week is going to be where especially you know day one you're going to have you know 15 odd people in a squad and then over time it's going to shave off into to something more they're still big i think my squad in florida phase by the time i finally graduated was maybe like 10 people so it's still pretty big but it does they're big because people go away over time yeah so you're doing squat you're doing squad operations um, the graded positions are squad leader and the team leaders. Those are the graded positions. So um, I th I've said this in earlier episodes, but it's like it's a combat leadership school. So you're being tested on your ability um, when you're when you're cold, if you're in a winter class or if you're super hot in uh, in a summer class, when you're tired, you're not sleeping, when you don't have that much food. Um, can you plan and execute <clears throat> combat operations successfully? Right. Let me mean. ask, let me interject here. Yeah. I get it. It's a leadership course. And from, from what I gather, if you're qualified, if you make it through the school, then you are capable of assuming a squad leader position or a team leader position by training. You have those skills, right? Assuming those, assuming, I mean, so Ranger school, it doesn't, it doesn't actually entitle you. You're not entitled to anything. No. And, that, and that's the only, I can't think of a better word for it, but the only, you only graduate the course, you got the course certificate. You know, if you, let's say I was in the rage regiment, it's very prescriptive, like, right. You know what you do after you come back from school. But if you're in the 82nd, I, I had, I knew somebody who is in the 173rd airborne brigade out of Italy. And he went to ranger school as a private. And then he came back and he was still a private, or I think maybe they, they gave him E4, but he wasn't a leader. He didn't come back and get to assume yeah. a leadership position. Now, now obviously coming back with your tab that like that, that'll bode well for you. Like when a spot opens, are you likely mm -hmm. to give him, but it doesn't necessarily mean right away you're going to get that. Right. I, yeah. I just asked because in the, in the, in the teams where I come from, it's more rank related. Like, 
the the platoon commander is going to be an officer mm -hmm. the assistant platoon commander is going to be an officer the chief's the chief oh, the LPO, I see what saying, LPO. Yeah. yeah so it's it's not you're not going to be a ground force commander if you're enlisted period right yes okay yeah that's a, yeah mm -hmm. that's a great question no because pfc me needed i was a pl i was I was a platoon leader for mission for missions when we got to mountain phase because yeah. I, I needed to pass it and in Florida. Right. So P, P, PFC, PFC, nobody needed to be able to do that to pass the school, but that did not, that doesn't mean that it's when I got back out, I was like, yeah. all right, LT move out of the office. I'm in charge. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. Right. But, but the, yeah, that's an interesting, yeah, that's an interesting question. I never thought of from that perspective. Um, so, um, so yeah. So in, um, so you're doing you're doing squad lab. So again, ambushes. You're now when you start each phase, you're not in the field the entire time, which is one thing people think. So they think it's 62 days of you're straight out in the field, like digging like ranger graves and and you're in a patrol base. It's not like that. It, it is structured. So you'll go out to the area you're going to be operating in. And mm -hmm. in, in at Benning, there were like these bays, like these construction, like constructed, like open air bays where that had like whiteboards or chalkboards where you do all your planning, you'd still be sleeping outside, but you'd have like a burn barrel. Mm -hmm. um, and um, you mm -hmm. would, the first thing they do is you have a few days of, uh, you do have a few days of classes. They are teaching you now. Mm -hmm. Everyone's been to pre-rangers, so they already got this training, but the idea is you're paying attention to your RI, your ranger instructor, who's giving you their version of it. And they're the person that's going to be grading you. So you're paying close attention to the things that they're, sort of knee stomp or foot stomping that they're going to be looking for when they go, when we go out to patrol that they're going to grade you on. So there are a couple of days of classes. You do walkthroughs. You'll go, you'll go out and sort of in an administrative setting, we say, so you'll, you'll go out and you'll do some of the movements, some yeah. of the things that you'll be evaluated on. And then you'll do your F your FTX where you're going to go out for like, you know, three, yeah. four days, four, you know, in Florida, by the time you go to Florida, I think you're out for like seven to nine days at a time straight, um, operating out in the woods. Um, yeah. But in in the fort at the bending phase, you do like three or four days, something mm -hmm. like that, and then you take turns, and it follows like a pretty it follows a pretty standard day. So um, you, I'll start from the beginning. So you wake up, you wake up, you're in your patrol base. Patrol base is basically just a, a a spot of land in the middle of the woods where you decided you were going to hold up for the night and everyone dug holes to dug literally <laughs> dug holes in the ground old school style and you slept in it and you took turns doing taking security throughout the night you know like however many people needed to be up um like 50 percent security whatever it is um so you didn't really sleep um <laughs> and the first thing you, so you do that you wake up and then you get into planning so you're yeah. sitting there in the patrol base during the morning time and the missions handed down to whoever the, the people were selected to be leaders for the day. Mm -hmm. They plan the mission there in the patrol base. Usually in the morning you get hit by the opposition forces op four. So guys with blanks come in, they try to attack the patrol base. You got to repel the attack. Um, uh, so you do that, you plan. And then sometime around, you know, late morning, you pick up the patrol base, you clean up, get all your stuff on, get your ruck on, and then you walk. And you're walking all day to the objective area. And so usually it's around like dusk when you finally show up to where the objective area is. You put in like, um, yeah. man, I'm forgetting the words, but you, you do your uh, ORP, objective rally point. So you do like a mini patrol base where you get all jocked up for the mission. Mm -hmm put on your nods, you know, put on your equipment, get ready to fight. You leave your rucksacks there. You do whatever the mission is. So again, in Darby phase, you're going to do a reconnaissance or you're going to do an ambush. You do that. And then um, you do that. And then you walk some more in the night. And then sometime in the middle of the night, you, you get to the place where you're going to sleep for the night. So that's your new patrol base. You set up the patrol base. You got to do it by the book. Yeah, and then like range stakes, you're setting up the machine guns at the right points. It's very old school. Yeah, um, and then then you set up security, and then that's it. And then you just do it over and over again while people are cycling through in the graded positions. Gotcha. So, um, so that's 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 sort of like day to day what it looked like in terms of my specific experience. I'm trying to think of some stories. 
So, um, you know, I, I actually recycled Darby the first time. <laughs> uh, so I, I, re- I had to do it twice. Um, so I was, a, I, was a, I was one of the team leaders. I was a senior team leader my first time when I did a no-go. And basically I lost accountability is what it came down to. So, you know, yeah. while you're, while you're walking through the woods all day, you're, you're, you're crossing different danger areas right. so while you're deep in the woods, you're relatively safe. You're okay. But there are times when you got to cross a road or mm. cross a big field, something like that. Or a river <laughs> or, or a river. Luckily no rivers in this part. Yeah. Uh, no, no raging rapids in, in South Korea. But, um, so, um, and, and in one of the stops, you know, my, as the senior team leader, you're the one who has to make sure you keep accountability. I didn't right. position myself in the right way. We go through the danger area. The RI comes up to me and says, what's your count? How many people you got? Oh. And I'm like, I have, I have no clue. <laughs> I, I'm just walking along with everyone. Else. Dreaded words. So, <laughs> we got a full head count. We got everybody. Ooh. I honestly can't tell you. Uh, yes. Pick a number, try to say it as confidently as possible, and then get recycled. I'm an optimist. <laughs> so, so I got recycled. Uh, so I got recycled for that. And uh, there's, and so that's an interesting story too. We're running out of time for this episode, but yeah. but I, I'll, I'll t- there's this thing called the gulag. So especially if you recycle in that first phase, there's a place you go where you're where you're held over, and it's called the gulag. Oh. And there were these two NCOs. They're like two E sevens. And they were like, like you for for like a couple of weeks while you're waiting for the next class to to class up, like you're doing detail, so you're cleaning stuff at Ranger mm. School. You're like permanent party, like like janitor cleaning stuff. Yeah. But then they're also teaching you the stuff that you screwed up on. So, uh, um, oh, that's... so it was like being in purgatory. Um, <laughs> it was it was tough, and and it, you're there with like a bunch of interesting characters. Like I was there with like two. I was there with like two Saudi officers and uh, did they, wa- did they recycle? Uh, yeah. They I recycled. guess everybody yeah. there is a recycle. Yeah. yeah. Everyone in the gulag is a recycle. So it's just a very odd cast. Oh yeah. You know? <laughs> and, and, and we had like a couple, had a couple green berets who were sitting there, you know, these guys were like E sixes, you know, on a free fall <laughs> team. And you're yeah. just like, it's just a very interesting time to just shooting the shit with them, you know? Yeah. Like you, yeah. you're cleaning, you're doing things, but you're not in the school. You're not classed up. So it's just right. a lot of, it's a time to get to know a lot of interesting folks and, 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 and officers and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I hated being there, but like, <laughs> looking back, I reminisce about the times. I don't really reminisce. That's a wrong word. It was, if I had to be there, at least there were interesting people there, I guess is how I describe it. It's a good way to put it. Yeah. And so, um, and so then, um, yeah, I think I got, so I, I got some more stories. So we'll pick that up in the next one. I'll keep going with this. But- so my takeaway is that in just listening now um, to this foreign concept that I've never, now I'm finally starting to take shape. What makes a ranger a ranger? Mm-hmm. But I think if I could leave it with one thought, it would be Swimming is to buds what rucking is to ranger school. Oh, definitely. So our pain and suffering was swimming long swims and dives. Rangers, it's rucking your butt off. Um, and okay, I so I got I got a good story about that. So I'll start with that. I'll talk okay. about rucks, ranger ranger school rucks when we pick up in the next one. Excellent. I want to hear more about dressing those rucksacks. <laughs> All right. All right, we will. Okay. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you later. Yeah.